activist and author Martha Shelley is with us tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. First off, happy Pride. We want to talk about the Stonewall Riots, one of the turning points in the queer movement. And I'm especially honored to chat with you because you were there for that uprising 53 years ago. Tell us a little bit about what life was like as a queer woman in New York City back then. Well, most of us were not able to be, um, how should I put it? We weren't able to be out, most people. I was. I was one of, I was 25 years old and um, maybe too dumb to be scared. Uh, but most people were in the closet. And what happens when you're in the closet is you internalize a lot of shame and self-hate. I was also, on, um, I was working in some kind of clerical job. And um, there was a lot of pressure for gay people to be bisexual. Uh, I got that from a therapist at the time. But one of the things I noticed is that the therapist and all of her straight friends were, didn't feel that they needed to be bisexual, just us. <laughs> what memories stick out the most to you those nights at the inn? Okay, I happened to be passing by Stonewall on the night of the 28th, Saturday night. I was giving a tour of for two women from Boston who were uh, wanting to start a Daughters of Believers chapter in Boston. I was the public's speaker for Daughters of Belitis in New York. And we passed by the stone wall and there were these young people throwing things at cops. I thought it was an anti-war riot. I'd you know, seen them, I'd been in them. Uh, and it was only a Monday, Monday morning when I read the newspaper and realized it was a gay riot. And the first thing I did was call the two people who were running the Daughters of Belitis chapter for those who don't know, that was the only lesbian organization around um, and nationally, and it was pretty small. I called them and said, we gotta have a protest march. And they said, call Mattachine Society, the gay men's organization, and if they agree, we'll have a protest march, which we did. And um, I helped to organize that march. And it happened exactly one month after Stonewall. And, and so being a part of those events, what was that like to you? Did you know that you were, you were, you were making history in that time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I knew it. I was on fire. I thought, this is it. This is our moment. I had been involved in the women's movement. I'd been in the anti-war movement. I was too young to have been on civil rights marches down south. But I knew perfectly well what had gone on. And... Um, I knew that this was our time, that we had, uh, we essentially took a leaf from all of those uh, demonstrations and organizations, and it was our, our big chance. I want to go back to uh, the night of the riots here. Uh, obviously, it was several nights. Uh, it was June. I can imagine it was hot. How did the weather impact those protests? I think one of it made it possible to be out at night. In fact, it was better to be out at night than during the day when in the daytime it was humid and uh, over 90 degrees. At night, it was still warm, you know, in the 70s. Um, and people were out uh, and looking to make love, looking to connect with other people, dance, have a good time. So the people were there. At the same time, um, the mayor was running for re-election, and that was the reason behind the riot, we believe, uh, or behind the raid of the Stonewall. The idea was clean up the city. Clean up the city meant arresting the gays and making our lives miserable, and arresting the prostitutes and making their lives miserable. And then, of course, everything went back to uh, business as usual after the election. Only this time it wasn't going to be business as usual. Right. And obviously treatment like that had happened for years leading up to that, decades even. But what made yes. this riot and police activity unique? What was it that had everyone fed up and, and ready to fight back this time? I don't know. I think it was um, people were just fed up and they had, and I think a lot, a lot of us had internalized um, what we had seen in all of these other movements. Uh, had seen people protesting. 
So uh, there was that kind of spirit in the air, the anti-war spirit, the uh, civil rights. It was, it was, a, it was the time, uh, the spirit of the times, you might say. And, and I'm, I'm so thankful uh, as a member of, of the LGBTQ uh, community as well, uh, that, that you did that. You, you, you took a stance and, and you said enough is enough. For you though, how have those nights changed your life? Have you been back uh, to visit Stonewall at all? Oh yeah. Um, I had never been in Stonewall. It was a gay men's bar. And um, the only time I went back, I, I, w I actually went inside was when they were having some kind of ceremony to declare it a national monument or to pressure it. And I made a speech there and I looked, I went inside and I was surprised at how small the place was. But to answer your other question, it changed my life enormously. It took away all of that pressure that I had internalized to try to fit in, to try to be, um, you know, bisexual if I was trying to do that. And my reaction afterwards was the hell, the hell with the um, requirements of society as they were, the hell with um, trying to fit in. We were going to change the world, not try to adjust to the way it was. Our rights are under attack again. And one of the, I'm Jewish, one of the things we say at Passover is in every generation, a new Pharaoh arises to oppress us. And that's happening right now. You can see it with the abortion movement or the, the what I call the anti-life movement, um, anti-women's lives, and we're next. And it is up to the next generation to be fight, to fight again for women's rights, for gay rights, um, against whatever wars the uh, governments want to gin up, but most important to save this planet because of climate change, because none of our rights are going to be worth anything if we all cry to death. Wow, powerful words. Martha Shelley, thank you so much, not just for being here now, but for fighting for our rights. It means a lot to have this opportunity. Thank you. Hey, AccuWeather fans, if you want to see more videos like this, check out some of our other ones right here. And if you like what you see, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more from AccuWeather.